We haven't seen this many people out at once since we got here. Everybody has come out for this game. The word Darfur has become synonymous with chaos and war. But thanks to a group of football-loving refugees along the Chad Sudan border, people are beginning to say the word with pride once again. For this episode of Rise is One, our friends at Budweiser sent us to the Jabal camp to meet the region's first football club, Darfur United. We're headed to the Jabal camp in eastern Chad to meet the organizers of Darfur United as they decide who will get to represent Darfur on the international pitch. Since the Darfur conflict started in 2003, over 200,000 refugees have fled Darfur. Jabal is just one of many refugee camps that dot the Chad Sudan border. In these camps, many different tribes who were recently in conflict are forced to live with each other under rugged conditions with limited resources. We're here with Gabriel, the organizer of Darfur United, and uh, we're about to go see the tryouts for, for the team. So Gabriel, you've been coming to this camp for many years. Can you tell me a little bit about Jabal? It started very much as an emergency situation. It's all people that were displaced by horrible violence. So they had just experienced, you know, bombs falling in their homes, militias riding in and killing men. There is always friction when people from different groups come together. One camp alone has 12 different tribes represented, speaking their own language with their own traditions. To combat these internal divisions, folks like Gabriel work tirelessly to create new programs for these camps to build them into actual, cohesive communities. Today, the camp was preparing for the 2014 tryouts. The players selected would be traveling to an international football competition in Sweden in eight months' time. So it looks like a lot of people around the camp are aspiring football players. You see them rocking their sweats and their jerseys. Darby United. United. <laughs> We wanted to get a sense of who would be trying out, so we met up with Ramadan, a hopeful for the 2014 team. Ramadan. Alaykum as salam. Assalamu alaykum. Alaykum as salam. Nice to see you. Badalo. Badalo, Joa. Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Can you show me around your home? Nam. Then madak al gadin so wa na kulu fogu yani. Da umar bitai. Ana da sagar lesa ma gadin ni shidwa. Atla ani ani zurub saba. Over the next two days, Ramadan would be competing against 60 other players in grueling 100 degree weather for one of five spots on the team. All right, wait, so, and, and you were on the team last year, right? Or you were on the team in 2012? So which one of these guys is the best? <laughs> oh, I get it. I, I see what you mean. So you guys are, are you all from different tribes? Yes. Are you tighter with the guys from your tribe, or are you tight with everybody on your team? I just, like, one tribe. I put, I put them in my mind, that, like, one tribe. We're about to go meet Abdul Basit, one of the players from the 2012 team. Since competing with Darfur United in Iraq, he's become something of a community leader here. He teaches in the Jabal camp. Azma wa Ul. Hey, what you mean, Jidda? Number one. Hamid is number one. Can you tell me about your experience uh, traveling to Iraq and competing uh, with Darfur United? Sahi kaan yaani fi. so the first day of tryouts is drawing to a close and it's still pretty unclear who's going to make the team, but these guys have decided that they're not going to sing the Sudanese national anthem as their song, but rather make up their own song, uh, something that they feel like represents them as Darfuris.
دربورنا جميل بالويدة والتراب وتسانخ لنا السلام شعارنا هذا دربورنا جميل It's the last day of tryouts here at the Jabal camp. An 11 on 11 game is going to decide which five players get to join the team and represent Darfur around the world. seen this many people out at once since we got here. Everybody has come out for this game. So how do you feel about the turnout today, Gabriel? Amazing turnout, uh, but it's uh, expected. I mean, they, they don't get something like this every day here in Jabal, so they're, they're excited to see who's going to make the team. So there's some pretty intense play going on on the field right now. Gabriel was saying that they're keeping the ball in the air a lot because they're used to playing on sand. The match was fast and physical, and every player out there was clearly giving it their all. But the athletes were still very much working together on the pitch and displaying strong teamwork. In the end, Abdul Basit led his side to victory. At the end of the game, the leaders from different tribes came together to choose their best players. Abdul Basit was chosen again to represent the team along with four other players. <laughs> Ramadan was not one of them. All right, so let's bring it in. Therefore, United. What does the future hold? What's the ultimate goal? Having something positive represent them, not just violence, not just displacement. Having a team, something positive, it, it just makes it more of a community. Seeing the way in which football was able to heal the wounds of war and create unity across tribal lines was truly inspiring. To continue the tradition of Darfur United, Budweiser has facilitated the creation of the Darfur Soccer Academy, a fully-fledged football training facility run entirely by refugees.